yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. I regret to tell you that very many American lives have been lost. In addition, American ships have been reported torpedoed on the high seas between San Francisco and Honolulu. Yesterday, the Japanese government also launched an attack against Malaya. Last night, Japanese forces attacked Hong Kong. Last night, Japanese forces attacked Guam. Last night, Japanese forces attacked the Philippine Islands. Last night, the Japanese attacked Wake Island. And this morning, the Japanese attacked Midway. I asked that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Pearl Harbor is an American Navy base established in 1899, just seven miles west of the city of Honolulu. Honolulu is the capital of the U.S. state of Hawaii. Hawaii is a state made up of eight islands. Pearl Harbor is on the southern coast of the island of Oahu. The year is 1941. World War II has been raging across Europe and Asia for two years, fought so far between France, the United Kingdom, China, and the Soviet Union known as the Allies, versus Germany, Italy, and Japan, known as the Axis. Amongst many reasons, Japan, Germany, and Italy feared the United States for three major reasons. Political power. Because the United States had established itself as a fully industrialized economic powerhouse since the early days of the 1900s, in fact, the United States was considered one of the big three great powers along with France and the UK. The US actively participated in the Paris Peace Conference after World War I and was invited to join the League of Nations, but declined on its own wishes. Landmass. The United States was so much bigger in landmass, meaning more resources and more production capacity. The United States had a landmass 28 times that of Germany, 26 times that of Japan, and 33 times that of Italy. Population. The U.S. had a population almost twice that of Germany and Japan each, and three times that of Italy. A larger population means a larger number of potential military recruits and a larger workforce for the production factories. With greater land mass and population and a rich economy, Germany, Italy, and Japan rightfully feared the sheer might of the American war machine. Sunday, December 7th, 1941. America would change forever. There would be an America before Pearl Harbor, which was isolationist, meaning it didn't get involved in conflicts involving other countries. And after Pearl Harbor, an internationalist America would rise from the ashes of Pearl Harbor. At 7.48 a.m. in the morning, weekend day, maybe you're sleeping in because you stayed up late on Saturday, but in the waters north of Hawaii, 353 aircraft of the air service of the Imperial Japanese Navy took off from six Japanese aircraft carriers and attacked Pearl Harbor in two waves. The first wave would fly over the western part of the island, while the second wave would fly over Oahu's east. Japan had not yet declared war, 
and had been holding peace talks with Washington. Why did it continue holding peace talks? Why didn't Japan declare war? Simple. It wanted to deceive. Japan wanted the attack on Pearl Harbor to come as a complete surprise. It was designed to knock out the U.S. Navy with minimal Japanese casualties. Before commencing the main attack at 7.48 a.m., Japan tested the waters at Pearl Harbor that morning. At 3.42 a.m., a full four hours before the main attack, the USS Condor spotted a Japanese submarine periscope just south of the Pearl Harbor entrance. It's easy to say that the entire base should have gone on full alert at that very second, but Japan and the U.S. had previous isolated incidents, so the military might have assumed this was yet another isolated incident and had no reason to know six aircraft carriers full of bombers and fighter aircraft were about to execute a full-scale attack. As the Japanese aircraft got closer to Pearl Harbor, they were detected by a U.S. Army radar at Opana Point, but the officer in charge, a Lieutenant Kermit A. Tyler, thought he was seeing six U.S. Army B-17 bomber aircraft arriving from California on his radar. The attack would last a devastating 90 minutes straight. Some of the Japanese officers, like Captain Mitsuo Fushida, would advocate for a third wave of attack to target Pearl Harbor's fuel and torpedo storage, maintenance, and dry dock facilities. Vice Admiral Nagumo refused because of a higher risk of Japanese casualties because Japan no longer had the element of surprise. The six Japanese aircraft carriers were also running low on fuel and the aircraft returning from a possible third attack would have had to land on the carriers at night, which was a relatively riskier maneuver. U.S. Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, later Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet, remarked about the possible third wave. It would have prolonged the war another two years. Why did Japan attack the United States? Let's rewind history a little. The United States had stopped exporting airplanes airplane parts, machine tools, and aviation gasoline to Japan in 1940 in an attempt to have Japan withdraw from China and to deter further Japanese invasions in the Pacific. Withdrawing from China would have been humiliating and embarrassing for the Japanese military to accept. Japan set its eyes on the resource-rich Southeast Asia, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Southern China as well as oil from Indonesia. However, the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, commonly referred to as FDR, had sent a clear message to Japan that the United States would personally get involved if Japan annexed any further territory in Asia. Japan, sensing war with the U.S. being inevitable, started planning the Pearl Harbor attack in early 1941 applying the principles of the decisive battle doctrine, meaning a singular operation that knocks out the enemy. A top secret operation named Operation Z during planning and Operation AI later on. Rather than withdraw from China and regain oil importation from the US, Japan chose to attack the US. Emperor Hirohito gave authorization to execute Operation AI on December the 1st and sealed the fate of Imperial Japan forever. As I briefly showed earlier in the video through FDR speech, in addition to Pearl Harbor, Japan also attacked US-owned Guam, the Philippines, Wake Island, and Midway, as well as British-owned Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia. Eight territories including Pearl Harbor, within 24 hours, because Japan was running out of oil fast and wanted to take over European and American colonies in Southeast Asia for their natural resources. It wanted to knock out the U.S. Navy so that the U.S. wouldn't interfere in Japan's future planned conquests. If Japan's objective was to knock out the U.S. Navy, why did the attack on Pearl Harbor fail? Japan made several big mistakes. It completely ignored Navy repair yards oil tank farms, the submarine base, and the former headquarters building. American aircraft carriers were also completely untouched. The survival of the repair shops and fuel depots allowed Pearl Harbor to continue its logistical support 
to U.S. Navy's operations like the Doolittle Raid and the Battles of Coral Sea and Midway. American submarines immobilized the Imperial Japanese Navy's battleships. Japan had built numerous battleships, thinking battleships would determine the course of the war. And when American submarines immobilized them, that brought Japan's economy to a virtual standstill by crippling the importation of oil and raw materials. By the end of 1940, the amount of raw materials Japan was able to import was cut in half to a paltry 10 million tons, while oil was almost completely denied. And that old headquarters building? Well, it contributed because it had a basement where the cryptanalytic unit worked on deciphering Japanese communication codes which contributed significantly to the U.S. ambushing Japanese forces at Midway and to the U.S. submarine success. So what happened next? News of the attack was announced by the White House about an hour later at 8.52 a.m. Hawaii time while it was already afternoon in Washington. Eight minutes later, CBS radio would notify the public and the nation became aware of the catastrophic attack. FDR roused and energized the nation and gave one of the most historic speeches in American history, titled the Infamy Speech, in one of the most historic joint sessions of the United States Congress, asking for a declaration of war, a request Congress would fulfill within the hour, and the full might of the United States officially entered World War II, where it would eventually emerge fully victorious in 1945 along with Britain, France, and other allies four years later. Repair work at Pearl Harbor would begin almost immediately and would bring a remarkable 18 of the 21 U.S. Navy ships attacked at Pearl Harbor back to service before the war was even over. The United States performed a massive 20,000 hours of repair work just underwater alone. A quote often attributed to Admiral Yamamoto states, I fear all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant. This quote was included in a 1970 film. Similar quotes were portrayed in the 2001 film Pearl Harbor and the 2019 film Midway, but there's no evidence he made this statement. However, an indication of the economic and military strength of the United States can be found in how British Prime Minister Winston Churchill reacted to news of the attack. In his own words, he states, I went to bed and slept the sleep of the saved. Knowing the United States and its 1.8 million strong military would surely enter World War II now and save Britain. Over 6 million Americans would volunteer and over 11.5 million more would be drafted into the World War II war effort. The United States would use its vast economic strength, military numbers, and military production capacity to project its force on three different fronts at the same time, pushing back Japan in the Pacific and fighting Germany and Italy in North Africa and Europe. In August 1945, Japan surrendered and signed an official surrender on September the 2nd. The U.S. military administered Japan until 1952. The U.S. also forced the emperor to publicly admit that he had never been a god in human form, something which he did claim to be before his surrender. His status would also be demoted from imperial sovereign to simply a constitutional monarch. The Pearl Harbor attack was judged a war crime in the Tokyo trials, while the United States emerged as a global superpower. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. Leave me a comment below to let me know what other videos you would like to see. Share this video with your friends so that they can know the history behind Pearl Harbor too. And if you like this video, click that subscribe button and the bell icon. That'll let you know the next time I upload a video. Bye bye